Hello, world of YouTube. How you doing? <laughs> I am currently in Kansas City, hence being in a hotel room and just recording on my computer. Um, I'm here building my van with Van Do It. I'll put a link in the caption to them, even though this video is not about them, but it's cool to check out if you want to check them out. Anyways, very excited about my van, very excited about my next adventure in life, um, which I will tell you more about in future videos, so stay tuned. Make sure you are subscribed. If you're not, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below because you're not going to want to miss out. Anyways, this video is really cool. I sat down with uh, Susie Murphy, the executive director of San Diego Mountain Biking Association. I am very close friends with her and her husband, Sean. We get together and go riding all the time. Uh, I did a video with them recently, uh, riding in McDowell Mountain Regional Park, uh, just outside of Phoenix. Um, if you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out right here. I don't know if it's this corner. Or this corner excuse me email just come it came in oh it's uh zoic um marketing director at zoic so there we're, we're we're talking about some custom gear for adaptive riders very exciting um do you have discount codes uh for zoic uh in the caption um they're good people please support them and they make quality products make sure you uh and that link is an affiliate code so um you can feel good supporting good people getting a quality product and supporting my channel so thanks for that there's other affiliate codes down there as well same thing with them make sure you check them out okay um, so without further ado here is a podcast with Susie murphy from san diego mountain bike association talking everything uh, trails in San Diego and adaptive. Enjoy. Ooh, I, I actually got a notification that you're recording me. Oh, how about that? You're being recorded. Watch out. It's like, it's like Snapchat when you send dirty pics and you get, and someone takes a screenshot, you get a notification. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that. I don't know how that works. Right. Are, are we doing right. this? No, it's five o'clock. Five o'clock. <laughs> your time. I probably <laughs> shouldn't do that over my computer, huh? Uh, me too. What do you got there? Salud. This is my Salud. favorite beer right now, actually. I'm not even joking. I love whether it. I was on whether I'm on contract with them or not, this is my favorite beer. I swear to God. Whether they're an amazing sponsor or not, this is wild little thing is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, once it hits your lips, it's so good. So good. Awesome. Uh, all right. Are you ready to start this thing? I was born ready, kitten. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the... Uh, Trail News Podcast with San Diego Mountain Biking Association. I am Susie Murphy. I am the Executive Director of SDMBA, also known as STIMBA. Um, and my very special guest tonight for episode four is Jeremy McGee, who is a dear friend and an all-around uh, rad man of adventure an adaptive mountain biker, among other sports, and soon-to-be van lifer. I hear. Yes. <laughs> What's going on? As of as of Monday, this coming <laughs> Monday, can you believe it? I'll I'll I'll, I'll have my van. That's super exciting. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, cool. Well, welcome everybody. We're just gonna chat. Um. Hopefully, um. We don't get too silly. We have a lot of important things we work on besides having a really good time. Um. And camping together and traveling together and riding at mammoth and other cool places together so um oh i just got back from mammoth bike yeah, parks open you did were you there on opening day yep awesome um well let's talk more about mammoth in a little bit but 
Can you just, um, can you introduce yourself for the people? I know you're super famous, but for the people who don't know who you are, can you? Can you super in infamous. <laughs> um, crap, well, um, who am I as it relates to Stimba? Um, I'm actually born and raised San Diego, San Diego native for all these, all those of you out there that call yourself locals and you're not born here. Me too, I'm a native too. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I went to Mira Mesa High School. I got um, jumped by an Asian gang <laughs> in high school. That's um, and I actually grew up exploring PQ Canyon and everything that existed beyond because there was no development whatsoever. Um, I, I grew up exploring all of that as a child. What year did you graduate? I graduated, uh, oh crap, like 94. I graduated high school in 94. Um, oh yeah, and there was nothing. There was no Sorrento Valley. There was no development there. There was no, all like everything, like, you know where the, the 805 five split is? Yeah. There was nothing there nothing that was all canyon and open land that we used to have crazy parties out there <laughs> and bring generators and I remember some guy chased me with a machete <laughs> don't, give away, don't give away all your secrets <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah oh i got a lot of secrets <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so born and raised san diego um i went to point loma nazarene for college um so i stayed local pretty much because I, you know, that way I could go home and do my laundry and like get lotion and toothpaste and toiletries for my mom. <laughs> it's a good plan. <laughs> yeah, good plan. Good plan. And then, um, and then I got paralyzed in a motorcycle accident uh, when I was 25, a few years after college. Um, we probably don't need to get into details of that, but just lucky to be alive. Almost didn't make it through that one. And then, um, subsequently um you know i've always been a runner i've always been a trail runner and um subsequently just found this cool mountain bike to get me out running running on the trail again and uh, decided to just freaking embrace it full bore um and awesome. become a mountain biker i guess there you go so you, <laughs> weren't, you you weren't really a cyclist before at all in any way no no um no. i dabbled in like triathlons and stuff like that but i was more into like swimming and trail running and surfing and things like that yeah, yeah. um so yeah that's cool um maybe that's why we get along so well because we're both native san diegans we're so few and far between so yeah gotta and we're stick. both hot we gotta stick I'm together <laughs> <laughs> don't tell sean that <laughs> so I'm sure I'm sure that um, some people may have seen you out on the trail on your rig, um, but I know that you got like a you, sore thumb out there. <laughs> right. When, when we're fortunate enough to get to ride with you, people are always want to stop and look and they're amazed at the machine that you ride. Can you explain a little bit about um, what that looks like and um, how that yeah. works? Yeah, it's actually a pretty amazing feat of engineering. Um, so you've seen, you've probably seen like a road hand cycle where there's one drive wheel up front and, you know, two wheels trailing behind. This is the opposite because rear wheel drive is important when you're riding on rocks and dirt. So it has one drive wheel in the rear and then two wheels up front, full independent suspension for each wheel. And then, you know, when I'm going downhill, my hands are on the handlebar, you know? But the question of engineering, you know, when, and then when I need to propel myself, is, you know, there's a, there's a hand crank. Um, and then the question of engineering is how do I then steer when my hands are off the handlebar? Well, if you look at my bike, there's like a chest pad that sticks out in front of me. And that actually has cables that connect to the stem. So I steer with my chest when my hands are on the hand crank. It's pretty cool, uh, but it does have a power assist. So I do have the option, like when I'm on trail, I need a little 
more precision steering than I can get with my steering in my chest. I'll steer with one hand and I can crank with the other. I do that a lot when I'm on, you know, narrower trail and things like that. Cool. And we'll put a link in the show notes um, with uh, your, your website and stuff so people can see pictures of what that looks like. Um, so as you've gotten into mountain biking and being out on the trails and stuff, can you talk about, um, I guess, a little bit about the adaptive mountain bike scene, how it is in San Diego and how you see it in maybe other places um, across the West or the country. Um, and then how that leads you into being kind of a, a, maybe not by choice, but becoming an advocate just because of what you do. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. Well, the adaptive mountain bike scene in San Diego is small but growing, um, especially because it's a military town. You've got a lot of uh, lot of veterans and a lot of disabled veterans. And those guys, and the VAs are now um, beginning to pay for uh, more expensive equipment. These bikes are not cheap. And so uh, um, these guys are now able to get bikes um, and are out there ripping around, which is really, really cool to see. Um, I probably personally know maybe a dozen adaptive riders which is not a lot when you consider you know one of the largest cities in the united states but it is it is growing fast um i, I know a guy uh paraplegic uh disabled veteran guy in ramona that just got the same bike as me really excited to get him out and ride with him and show him the trails um but yeah i mean you know there's way bigger adaptive scenes in you know other cities uh you know, up in the Vancouver, British Columbia area, there's a really big adaptive scene. Um, and, you know, they usually kind of um, gather around like the larger adaptive programs out there. For example, like um, Winter Park, Colorado has a very large adaptive program. And they have a really, you know, you know, big adaptive bike community out there, you know, things like that. Right. And um, we mentioned Mammoth earlier. So, and I know Mammoth has a big adaptive sports program as well. Can you talk a little bit? I know, and you've been riding and skiing there too, right? For, for mm -hmm. some time. So can you talk a little bit about how, how that works across the seasons and, um, you know, it's, it's an adventure with you always, but um, the first time we went with you and we were going to get on the gondola, I'm like, what is going to happen right now? Like, I, I was like, what? <laughs> so can you just, as now it's oh. park season, we're into park season, everybody's so happy that Mammoth's getting open and Snow Summit and Snow Valley are all open. So can you talk a little bit about what happens when you go to the park and how that adaptive sports program helps you out? Yeah, you know, um, adaptive skiing is very established. It's been around for a long time. So that's like, you you know, you, you know, you're an adaptive skier, you go to somewhere like Mammoth, you're pretty set up, everything's, you know, there's not much, many questions to ask there. Um, but uh, adaptive mountain biking is relatively new. Um, and Mammoth uh, adaptive program, they're called Eastern, uh, uh, East, uh, was it Eastern Sierra Disabled Sports, Disabled Sports Eastern Sierra. Okay. Great people. I, you know, I taught, used to teach some ski lessons for them back in the day. I actually used to live there. Um, and they've, their, their summer program is growing. They have a pretty good collection of uh, adaptive bikes now. Um, it's pretty cool to see that happen. That said, Mammoth is raw. It's really, it's really tough uh, for any rider and definitely for adaptive riders. And it's been, a work in progress for me to kind of discover, you know, what trails are doable there. It's funny, you you know, you think like, oh, adaptive rider, you got to stick to maybe, you know, blues and things like that. And, you know, stay away from blacks. It's, it's the opposite. It's crazy. The, you know, the blues tend to like have some traverses, traversing to them, you know? Yeah. And as you've seen off camber, especially exposed off camber, is what gets me and when the trail traverses that's where you get that but the blacks are a little more fall line you know and rocks don't stop me <laughs> so <laughs> actually i've learned last summer was really good for me in mammoth um i learned i can ride a lot of the big boy trails solo um and i'm really excited what was that 
What are some of the runs up there that by name that you really like? My favorite trails velocity, which you started to go down last year. Do you remember that one? Yeah, I had to, yeah, I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I had to skirt. I had to skirt out. Yeah, that was a lot for me. <laughs> and then bullet is my other my other favorite. Yeah. Um and you really like shotgun. Yeah. That one? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Shotgun's a good trail. Um yeah, but pretty much bullet flow and velocity are my favorites um for those of you out there listening that know the trails i did upper chain smoke which is next level um i was scared out of my mind but um (laughs) handled it with help with help definitely with help but um so last summer was good for me to discover that i can ride trails like velocity and bullet solo no one has to touch me and so that's really exciting for me um, and then when it comes to riding the gondola, <sighs> I mean, that, that feeling that you described of like, what's going to happen? Yeah. I have that feeling every time, every day, because it's always different people and my bike like, barely fits in the gondola. And so um, I've, since I have an e-assist, I've kind of just started just climbing the service roads. Yeah. And it's made my experience a lot better, to be honest with you. That makes um, e-bikes are really cool for that reason. Um, my friends up there are actually starting to get e-bikes and climbing the service roads with me. We right. don't have to wait in the gondola building. We don't have to wait in line. We don't have to ride a lift. Right. Um, for sure. And we're actually like, instead of sitting on a chairlift, we're actually climbing up. And even though we have an e-assist, we're still getting a pretty good workout. You know, I'm drenched in sweat by the time I get to the top. <laughs> so that's kind of what I do now. I, I, I prefer to climb the service roads. But when I'm riding with friends that do not want to do that, because that's heinous to do if you do not have an e-bike, um, I'll ride the gondola. or the, I, I prefer to ride chair two when that's running on the weekends. There's no yeah. line. It's super yeah. easy. Um, I actually made a video about riding chair two and why I prefer that. If okay. anybody wants to check that out on my channel. Cool. Um, so that's a good segue. So um can you talk a little bit about um, your website, The Unpavement, and um, about what is there and the service that it provides for other adaptive riders? Um, and then we can get into Trail Forks as well. What Rad. Yeah. Um, well, Trail Forks will be a part of my answer. So yeah. Okay, yeah, for sure. Oh, I do both. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, glad you, I'm glad you asked that because this is my life's work. <laughs> this is... This is what I, I do stuff now. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I've, uh, I'm going to just say before I answer your question that I've kind of just bounced around my whole life. Um, and I'm for the first time in my life living with purpose and direction. And I wake up knowing what I'm doing. And it's look at you. It's cool. I'm, I know I'm all grown up. <laughs> so much adulting. It's so good. I know, right? Good for you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So as cool as this bike is um it is limited you know and as you've seen personally um and i've i've gotten into some very precarious situations out there on the trail even been helicoptered out of pq canyon my home turf you know um i mean you can imagine uh, you know trying to turn that thing around on like narrow single track as a paraplegic by yourself, <laughs> it's almost impossible. It can turn a normal day into a really shitty day really fast, really fast. Um, and so I kind of, you know, I was starting getting, you know, starting to get into trouble out there, and I jumped online to kind of see what was out there. And you know, there's there's other guys doing similar things, um, and their websites are cool, but when it comes down to the brass tacks of like actual application of it, like I still didn't know. I still didn't know. Like they could provide me with all this amazing information, color coded and everything. And I still don't know. I'm still gambling when I go out there. Yeah, I still, the only way to know is to go down the trail. So um, I developed a, um, I did call it trail forks. Um, and was like, Hey, what do you guys think about, you know, documenting this information, uh, you know, 
for adaptive riders so that someone like me can use the app like anybody else. And they're like, yes, let's do it. Let's do it, do it, do it. Um, so I developed a very simplified rating system. Um, and the, I mean, I, the logic behind it is very, let me just say the logic behind it is very thorough. I've like really, really worked on this where it can like actually make sense in a practical application and be dupl duplicatable across multiple platforms. And then especially when it comes to signage and things like that, which is under huge scrutiny. Let me just tell you this, especially in the adaptive trails community. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Bring it on people. Scrutinize. Let's talk. <laughs> it's funny. I took the guy who's the exact opposite of me. Like you, if you sit us in a room, he's like exact opposite of me. And in just two, like two emails, he was a believer. Huh? He was yeah. fully behind my system. Like, yeah. yeah. So if, and he's right, he's right. So for him to like support me shows, shows you anyways. So I developed this system. Trail Forks has adopted it. So um, it's all about documenting trails for adaptive riders and it's all about um the long game you know documenting trails one by one i'm i'm right now um starting an ambassador program while i'll be training other adaptive riders so they can do the same in their areas and over time every ride we do if we just go on the trail forks and update the information after every ride in 10 years hopefully an adaptive rider can go on the app and know where they can ride safely Right. It's a really, really fun project. Right. So some of you might have noticed if you if you look at trails, say um, Black Mountain or Penasquitos, um, you might have seen Jeremy's input there, and you'll see down on the page below the map like a little um, AMTB rating. So it'll be like AMTB one or AMTB two um, or three or four, yep. and it has a little extra um, feature there on that trail page for. Um, for that place. So uh, that's super cool uh, that Trailforks um, does does that um, to help everyone. I think it's terrific. Have you mapped other um, that rating in not just in San Diego, right? You've done it for Mammoth and some other areas too, a little bit. Yeah. Um, and McDowell. Mammoth like, ever. Yep. Yep. Arizona. McDowell, but McDowell is easy. Everything's right. AMTB1. Everything's good at McDowell. Right. Pretty much. There are a couple trails that are AMTB2, which means there's a question. Right. Um, but that's more for riders with front wheel drive and like steep loose stuff. Um, well, they're going to need a push, you know, because their front wheel is going to spin out. Um, but yeah, pretty much wherever I ride, I go into the trail fork. You know, you get that notification after you ride from trail fork. It's like, hey, add, trail, add a trail report. So that's kind of my reminder to go do my trail work. My trail work's all yeah. online, you know? So well, that's really fun. But PQ has kind of been the guinea, the Los Penasquitos Canyon has kind of been the guinea pig. Um, and it's been really cool. Um, that's kind of where it all started. Right. That, that's where I ride the most. That's my home turf, you know? And so um, I can't even remember how we met at this point. Um, I remember. Do you? It seems like we've known each other forever. When did we yeah, you were working. You were working at the strip club, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That part. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you got secrets too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, we'll figure I it remember, out. Um, Meredith McConville introduced us at yeah. um, Interbike. That's right, Interbike. I remember Interbike. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. You had a booth and she introduced us and we started talking and it and it was on. There we're we friends. Go. There we go. Yep. Um yep. excellent. And so um with the adaptive thing, well, I think in writing with you, the and now I think about it when I go anywhere, um, you have a saying that you say you'd be you you'd be surprised at what I can ride, but you'll also be surprised at what I can't ride. And so can you explain that a little bit? Every time I go into a staging area now and I look at a gate or a step over or whatever, I'm always like, could Jeremy get through here? What would I you can't tell you how I can't <laughs> tell you how many times I've gone through all the effort, you know, loading up, getting on my gear, you know, got plans to ride. I drive somewhere and I get there and 
stopped immediately by a gate at the first trailhead. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, but kind of, you know, what I said earlier about like, you know, blues are harder than blacks, you know? Um, that's what I mean when I say that. Like, you'll be surprised what I can get through. The first question, you know, I get asked a lot is, oh, you probably can't take that on single track. I'm like, actually, I can get through a lot of single track, you know, because, you know, the impact of the trail, the suspension, you know, I might not be flowing it, but I'm, you know, it might be more problem solving and getting through a lot of times, but I'm getting through. Right. Um, you'd be surprised, like, how narrow, narrow of trails I can actually get through. What's and also the, when it, what's that? Yeah, what's the wheelbase? Just so everybody knows, like, the widest point of your bike is. The tread to tread is 33. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Tread to tread, tread to tread is 33. Um, but the overall width is 35 because the hubs, like, stick out a little bit. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. There's little nubbin, little nubbins on the outside of the. So if I'm going between two trees, it's got to be 35. But on trail, I need like 33. You know what I mean? Right. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. And then people think like, oh, you can't really probably ride like technical stuff. I'm like, well, actually, that's the best thing. <laughs> right. you know, technical doesn't really stop me. Um, right. I I think that's the other misconception. Um, I'm not just in San Diego. Anywhere is that when people he think of when they hear adaptive mountain bike um, and they're like, okay, well, somebody in a wheelchair is going to get on a, a rig, some kind of bike, and they're going to want some trail that's like a sidewalk or a um, pathway, like a really wide community pathway. Ooh. <laughs> that sounds so boring. Just, just, like regular, <laughs> just like most regular mountain bikers, we're out for a little more uh, nature-based experience uh, than that. And so um, you know, while some, some people may require trails like that, um, if they're in, depending on their uh, abilities, um, what you do and what your adaptive rider friends and these riders who are veterans or whatever, they're going to be after a very progressive, advanced, more advanced, um, you know, a regular trail with rocks. Yep. And, and Absolutely. Yeah. So I think. I want to jump off rocks. Yeah. Yeah, but I think for elected officials or park and rec right. professionals, they are just uh, not really understanding. Um, so that brings us to, you know, back to Penny Skeetos and working with Ranger Gina. Um, you've done a few things there with the help of um, some um, uh, longtime SDMBA folks like Mike Jennings. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that um, as there's some trail signage that went in down in tunnels and some yep. little um, alterations to allow you to ride uh, alone through a couple of pitch yep. trees? Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So dude, Ranger Gina and Mike have been amazing. Um, my experience in PQ Canyon right now, like I... I was kind of bored with it because I was having to do like a lot of out and backs so and was really limited where I can ride. And um, I'm able to do a couple different internal loops now. And I'm like, I'm excited to go ride PQ now. It's like my, and I've taken a couple friends on some, on, on my regular rides and they're like, wow, that was really fun. I'm like, I know, I know. <laughs> um, let me just say that we never want, I, you know, we're, when we're working on a trail and making it adapter friendly, um, the last thing we want to do is dumb it down and we don't want to sanitize anything and we never want to change the nature of a trail. If the nature of a trail is like, we're going to have to completely bulldoze this thing to get an adaptive bike through. No, we're not going to, no, we're not going to touch it. You know, it's, it stays, you know, stays how it is. But if we can make just like one, two, maybe three, you know, slight adjustments to get a whole other user group through a trail, to me, that's a no-brainer, you know. Right. right. So let me just say that. Let me just say that. Um, and uh, because I've gotten some flack for things and yeah, things, I, I was I had that on my list here to ask if you ever get you know a pushback from um, you know regular writers who are like you know what what are you doing what's going on yeah so absolutely yeah absolutely um, but hey there, you know there's PQ is a family place, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. But, uh, um, um, so, but it was um, really cool. It, 
yeah i was uh, when the, the how it all started in pq actually um in riding uh tunnel four there was a, a pinch spot mm-hmm. and i was having to do like a little i could get through these trees but it meant like kind of getting sideways and sometimes i would get flipped over trying to get through there Sometimes I could, sometimes I was fine, but sometimes I get stuck and flipped over. Um, so I started doing this little ride, ride around. Um, and, you know, some, some folks, you know, meaning well, you know, protecting the environment. And I completely understand that kept blocking it, you know? So, um, and I completely understand where they're coming from, you know? Right. Uh, so we put up a sign that said this is an adaptive ride around you know and that was the first sign to go up and it was really exciting right um and now the the trail now the trail goes through there right and the the old part is is closed off and it's it's perfect it's perfect right. and the plan with the signage is really cool um what what we're gonna do is you know at the main trailhead signs to have the information like this is what the symbol means. This is the rating system. When you see these signs, this is what, this is what it means. And um, you know, if there's going to be a ride around, just like they do with equestrians, like this is the equestrian ride around. Okay, well, this is the adaptive bike ride around. And um, also at trailheads, the rating, because honestly, the amount of people that actually do research before they go ride is very small. You know, most riders are not going on trail forks, and you know you know, coming up, they're either, they're either going to rely on signage. Well, they're going to rely on a tour guide, rely on signage or on a suggested route. Those are kind of the main things. And so that's why signage is really, really important because um, now if you think of a place is, is signed really well, an adaptive writer can go out there and like, just know, okay, this trail's AMTB one. I'm good. This trail's, you know, did I'll be good here, you know? And know where they can go. Right. Yeah. That that's awesome. Well, yeah. we we appreciate Ranger Gina for um, everything she does, and thank Mike for him helping you. And and I think it's you know it's really yes. cool to spend the extra effort to do that. Um, uh, I wanted to ask you. I know that you spent some time up in Portland recently, um, mm-hmm. working on a project, and so um, and I've seen um, other examples of. Um, places building like adaptive mountain bike friendly trails um, and they're fun and friendly for regular bikes as well right but they're Mm -hmm. they're made specifically um, to make sure that they're enabling the adaptive riders to get out there safely and have fun so what was that project in Portland you were working on it was the gateway green projects in downtown Portland um and uh, Chris Orr and I were contracted by um, a company called C2 Recreation, which was in charge of, of building that project. Um, really good people. Um, if you've got a trail project, um, check out C2 Recreation. They're really, really good. Um, and Chris Orr is obviously a trail mastermind. Yeah, um, so it was really cool. Amazing. Yeah. And so when it comes to, you know, making a project like that, you know, like, I I don't want to have to ride something different. You know what I mean? Like we, we try, we don't want to have like, okay, here's the adaptive section. Right. And that's where you go ride. No, that's segregation. We don't want that. I want to be able to ride with the big boys, you know, with everybody else. And so usually on a project, that's what we're looking to do is ride the existing aspects of the of the park or trail system and work with the designers and builders on making you know some of it or part of it adapter friendly and this project was different because there actually was they actually wanted an adaptive area Um, and we're like hey let's make it an area for everybody Mm -hmm. but just you know make it so that adaptive bikes can ride it too you know that's kind of what we did um, and it was really, it, I mean, it was challenging because the, the terrain we were given was, was kind of flat. Um, but we came up with this really cool track is a two way track with some technical rocks. I mean, we're basically just like collected all the rocks in the, <laughs> that we could find to make these rock gardens. 
and these um, kind of trials things we wanted to um, have different levels like this 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 um, challenge is AMTV one this challenge is AMTV two and it's all bi-directional which is really fun so this way is going to be AMTV one but if you write it this way it's AMTV three um, and just so adaptive writers can like work up on their skills and it was really 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 fun project that's cool is that open now then it's all finished it is open gateway green downtown portland um if you're in the area please go check it out and uh, awesome. send us a message tell me what you think <laughs> yeah. uh, that's terrific so you know you travel around quite a bit and we mentioned that you're going to be you're soon to be van lifer um yeah. so you're getting a van from uh van do it um, mm -hmm. where are they missouri or where are they is that right kansas city, kansas city mo that's what i thought and so yeah you're gonna pick that up and and be styling they got it all set up i'm gonna be styling they they're they're good people um they have a really cool business model um they they make it affordable to get a van so they they have this you know minimalistic modular system that they build on passenger vans and they can take trades and do financing and they just made this work for me you know they just made this they, and they, they're so good like their electrical work is super finished like all their electrical cases are all clear so that you can see the electrical work because it's so good you know that's kind of me like a, i see that as kind of a testament to how you know that's how well they do things very exciting it's got a hydraulic bed in the back little bathroom little kitchen solar i'm excited and a ramp for you to get your bike in right it's all going to be self-sufficient yeah they're fully they're fully customizing the garage area in the back under the bed for my bike it has um, a thousand pound gear slide that slides out we're putting three ramps in so i can just roll my bike in and then when i slide it in they're like cutting out a, like a wheel chalk in the floor. So the wheel like drops into the floor a couple inches and they're making some custom mounts for the through axles for the front of my bike. So if I want to take off the wheels, it'll lock in and I can lower the bed all the way down. And that's, that's super, super cool. fancy. You're probably not even going to talk to us anymore after you get that van. You're going to be like later. I don't know. You know, but you're going to you're gonna have to pursue me. If you, if you come to the ladder, <laughs> you know, We'll be there oh, camping together. We'll touch, we'll touch awnings at Sea Otter. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, awesome. Um, and then I understand um, you're going to be doing some work, uh, some consulting work in Bentonville, possibly too, at, on the horizon. Yeah. Uh, this is this is super exciting. Um, I just bought a house in Bentonville. <laughs> um, and I, I leave on Thursday. Today's Tuesday. I leave on Thursday. To go pick up the van and then go to Bentonville Bike Fest and then get the keys to my house. Crazy. Um, so as you know, Bentonville is claiming the mountain bike capital of the world. Oh, and right. now with me moving there, um, they're claiming the adaptive mountain bike capital of the world. And How about that? I know, and I'm a part of that plan. And so I'm gonna they're be gonna coming give you a statue? With... They're gonna give you a statue in the town square. <laughs> no thank you <laughs> oh my god i had some very perverted comments about no. that i'm not i'll no. keep them to myself i'll keep them to myself all right <laughs> um so yeah so uh basically um they've asked me to come up with a comprehensive ride plan for two years basically to ride every trail in northwest arkansas and document it for adaptive riders work on you know things here and there if a tra trail needs it um, submit a report and um, I've also um, acquired demo bikes I'm the U.S. dealer for um, um, adaptive mountain bike manufacturer in Europe I've acquired demo bikes so I'm bringing uh, an adaptive demo program to the area so that adaptive riders can um, come Come ride Benville and awesome. you know, not so, only have the equipment, but know where they can go. Right. So you're probably going to need to help with that. So we should probably come help you with that. You and Amy. I do have a guest room. I do have a guest <laughs> room. Go. And so I was going to yeah. say for people, 
people listening who might know someone who has um, certain challenges and might they think might be interested in in getting into adaptive mountain biking, um, how would they do that? Or if they contact you, like what what kind of information can you give them? To help them any information they need you know the the one thing is getting the equipment and that's the expensive part that's the tough part um we have a list of i have a list of organizations on my website that give uh grants for adaptive equipment and so that's what i advise people is first like apply to all those that they qualify for and do like and that's going to take work you know grant applications you know are usually pretty detailed and kind of hard so do that, apply that for every grant that you possibly can. Um, you know, get your friends together, get your community together, you know, have a fun little fundraiser, raise some money, save your own cash, you know, and uh, that's what I did for my first bike. Um, took me two years and I got my first bike, you know. Um, I spent, let's see, I had $9,800 in my bank account that I had ra- that I had raised and, you know, was my own money and stuff. And I wrote a check for $9,400. So I had $400 left <laughs> in my bank account and I bought my first bike. Um, so when people tell me like, oh, I don't have the money. I'm like, well, let's get it done. Let's get it done, bro. You know? <laughs> so getting the equipment is, is, the, is the biggest part. And then um, once, you have, once you have a bike, you know, um, figuring out where you can ride safely and uh right there's a lot more to it you know safety wise equipment wise things to wear you know really important to protect your body and right. so i right. can totally share tricks of the trade that i've learned over the years with people right well i think it's awesome and you know your the resources that you have it's awesome to know that there's all these places out there that do have grants available um, for people that need the help i think it's amazing um and so definitely sources that you have on your YouTube channel and, and all of that is terrific. Um, so anyway, that was all my questions pretty much. Um, That's it. Just, you don't I, want to talk about secrets? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll keep that for sea otter. Um, so yeah, yeah if when you guys, it, it, oh, go ahead. Go when ahead. is Sea Otter again? It's like the first week of October or something, right? Yeah, I don't have the dates right in front of me, but yeah, it's early. Oh, I know what you wanted to talk about that you forgot. What? CAMTB. Oh, that's right. I forgot. How could I do that? Um, so I Jeremy even... and I both are um, serve on the advisory council um, for California Mountain Biking Coalition. Um, uh, of which I've been working on for a past couple of years with some really amazing advocates around the state um, to bring our mountain bike advocacy up to a whole new level in Sacramento. And uh, each, we have um, 24 member organizations now that have joined our coalition representing, so cool. I think we're up to over 16,000 mountain bikers represented by those uh, 20 some organizations. So. We're uh, super excited. And each of those member organizations gets two people to be on the advisory council. And Jeremy was um, gracious enough to, to join me on that. And we have uh, regular calls uh, with, uh, you know, those about 25 or 30 people now. Uh, and it's awesome. Yep. We talk about, um, you know, uh, issues uh, in state parks, legislation that's going on uh, at the state level to deal with um, just uh, public lands access, uh, things like that. And and Jeremy, having you there uh, with your voice as an adaptive writer is really special for all of us. So we're happy that you're there. Super fun, it's an honor. Like when you Uh, asked me to do it, I was like, oh my God, there's cool. (laughs) Yeah, there's some real power players um, in that whole, on that advisory council. I mean, you've got everybody from, from Tahoe and Sierra Buttes and Santa Cruz and like all the major players have been doing trail mountain bike advocacy for years and years and now we're all you know uniting together and finding out our common um, issues um, opportunities we can help each other with resources we can share um, you know stories that we can share precedents that may have been set um, like I was just having a conversation day, today about um, 
you know, using e-bikes on forest service land to carry tools in and out of an area that may not allow e-bikes for recreational riding. So that's a whole discussion now. Um, but, you know, if one person has figured that out with a forest service that does, you know, we should be able to do that maybe in other forests. So we'll see. Um, but just an example of a topic. Um, but uh, yeah, the momentum has been really great. And we um, uh, are glad you're there for the conversation. Great. Yeah. Um, getting stuff done in Sacramento. But we have a cool, um, we have a cool retreat coming up in Downeyville. We do, yes. We are having a, a retreat with some of our advisory council members um, and board members up at the Lure Resort, uh, which is operated by Sierra Buttes Trail Stewardship, who is doing amazing work up in Downeyville in the Lost Sierra. Um, just phenomenal work uh, connecting all those towns up there with an amazing trail system. So yeah, we're going to hang out at the Lure. We're going to have some, um, I'm sure we'll have more of this Sierra Nevada beer going on, I hear. And we won't have this one. This one, no, we won't. Done. No, sadly, this one, they're out. It's done. Sadly, no summer break. You drank all the summer break before the summer even started, hardly. They gave it all. I did. They gave it all to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I can't wait to ride Downeyville. Um, have you never ridden I've there? Been, I've never ridden there. I've wanted to. Uh, we're gonna get into it out there with me. It sounds like it's gonna be. It's um, rugged. It's rugged for sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll figure out how to do uh, is you know several shuttle rides uh, around. Mm. But yeah, we'll we'll figure it out. They have a lot of vehicles up there. We'll be able to um, figure out how to make that all work. But yeah, it'll be fun. It's beautiful up there. Yeah. So um, and we'll ride and we'll um, also be having meetings and talking about how to make mountain biking better in California. Yeah, and then we have Sea Otter right after. Yeah. I've got um, Grinduro in Shasta right before. So I'm, I'll be in uh, Grinduro and then CMTB meeting in Downeyville and then Sea Otter Life all in the van. And then and then it's Mount Laguna Trail Fest here in San Diego. And then Trail Fest, Fest which I'll, I'm going to be late to. I have a speaking gig in Michigan and then, a, and then I fly like that day to Vegas and do a speaking gig the same day <laughs> in Vegas. And Make then I fly back and I, I go to Trail Fest. I'll be there the second day to Trail Fest. There you go. Yeah. It's going to be a whirlwind, but we're happy to be back outside with people and back at events and the schedule is filling up quick, right? Seriously, so excited, yeah. yes. Yeah, my, sure. I, my schedule's full. I, 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 it's on. <laughs> Starting Thursday, this, I've kind of taken a break. You probably, I don't know if you've noticed, but I haven't put out a video for like two months. I'm taking a break because I know on Thursday, basically the switch flips on and chapter two begins. And the channel is actually totally changing. Um, this, this is probably pretty interesting to talk about. Um, I'm splitting my, I'm starting a new channel. I'm splitting my channel to two. I have two audiences. I have my audience that wants the trail information, you know? And then I have my audience that wants like entertainment and like to be inspired. They want to know want, want to know about me and my life and that kind of stuff. So um, the channel is not going to be about mountain biking so much anymore. It's going to be about me and my life and my travels and getting set up in Benneville and things like that. And then I'm I started um, another channel. I call it, I'm calling it the Unpavement Uncut, and that's where I'm posting all the raw trail footage. So right that you know people that just want to watch the trail they don't want to see me they don't want to hear me talk they don't want to see uh, fun music videos or you know you know cool editing they don't want that they just want to see they just want to see the trail you know yeah. so well, that's, that's happening and that starts thursday okay <laughs> that's exciting what a tease i didn't know we were going to break big news here today that's exciting yeah um very right. exciting well cool well i think that um that was awesome, and I appreciate your friendship and um, have enjoyed writing with you and look forward to many more adventures uh, as this year goes on. And I just thank you for your help um, in spreading the word about adaptive mountain biking in San Diego and uh, all around the place. It's great. I love it. Thank you so much. This was super fun. Yeah. We're gonna uh, have, we gotta, we got to ride when I come back. Yeah, for sure. So um, we'll go ahead and put um, all the links to all of Jeremy's um, network of channels 
in the show notes. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, along with whatever else we talked about so that you can find it. And if you have somebody in your life that might be interested in this, uh, you can find more information there. And uh, just um, thank you. And thanks for your inspiration. And uh, we'll see everybody soon. Thanks so much. Everybody. Thank you.